Hello, everybody. Hello. Welcome to Friday. Today is uh, February the 11th. Hello, everybody. It's so great to see you. Thanks for hanging out with me today. Today is the last video of this series where we're working with the lamp post art quilt. We're going to do some quilting today. I'm going to start off with my walking foot. I have that already loaded on my machine along with some black thread in the top and bottom. And we're all set up ready to go. Hello, everybody. Just going to wait a second and let everybody get notified if they want to join us today that they have a chance to come on in. You'll notice on the screen the date of the mug rug of the month. Y'all, uh, if you missed last week, I'm going to show you what that mug rug looks like here in just a second. And next week, we're starting a new series, The Hummingbird Mosaic. Hello, everybody. Let me chew up this mint so I get rid of it. Okay, it's gone. <laughs> Hello, everybody. I want to thank Miss Dari for moderating today. Thank you so much, Miss Dari. Cheryl had a question earlier, and Dari uh, answered it. And uh, I totally agree with Dari. Cher Cheryl had asked, could you use this lamppost quilt as the centerpiece of a bigger quilt? And absolutely, I think yes. I think that would be gorgeous. Now, there's some things to keep in mind, you know, uh, if you painted your lamp post, uh, if you used the fabric medium, your paint's going to hold up so much uh, better, especially if you plan on washing it. If it's going to be a quilt that goes on a bed and gets washed, the fabric medium is really going to be your best friend uh, making this into a bigger quilt. But yes, you could certainly do that. Oh, and like Sheila just mentioned, you could do the fabric version. I did the fabric version. It still needs to be quilted, y'all. <laughs> so uh, I feel like we all go through seasons, right? Uh, and this is probably one of the reasons why I didn't plan a lot of content far in advance. We go through seasons, right? In my business, I'm super, super bus busy right now. Uh, I'm on my third quilt quilting for a client. She sent me four. I'm on my third one and I'm in the process of making four quilts from beginning to end for another, another client, which kind of has me torn because I'm doing lots and lots of sublimation, 80 photos on fabric and they're turning out fantastic. But this particular client does not want any of her photos and videos or on social media like Facebook. So I cannot share any of the progress of those quilts, which the reason I'm torn on that is because there's so many like video and teaching opportunities with the, putting the photos on the fabric and making the quilts, but I can't share any of it. But I've been super, super busy. So the only videos that really I've put out are the live ones. So thank you so much for hanging out while we're live. <clears throat> But yeah, I don't see lots of video opportunities outside of the lives in the next couple weeks <laughs> until I get these four quilts done. But the good news is, once these four quilts are done, my next client is a t-shirt quilt. And that is going to be so much fun. And she's a really creative person. So I think there's going to be lots of like video teaching opportunities with that quilt. So, all right. We're going to switch over to the mat. I want to show you the mug rug we're doing next week. Uh, you might have already seen this last week. It's called Lots of Hexies. The PDF is down in the description box if you want to grab that and get your stuff ready. Uh, I made my first one on purples, but next week we're going to just pull out of a scrap bag. That ought to be fun. And then next Friday, we're starting the uh, Hummingbird Mosaic. That should be awesome. I will have that thumbnail up within the next couple days so that you can um, print off the first pieces, right? But if you look down in the description box, <coughs> pardon me, there's a list of stuff that you need, right? Uh, so you can grab that if you wanna do it. I'm making mine with fabric and it's gonna be raw edge applique and a mosaic style of quilt. Same size as the lamppost, right? You can grab this page uh, down in the description box. I'm really excited about this. I'm really excited. So that's what we're starting. Before we start quilting, 
I wanted to let you know, uh, if you're on Patreon and you have a Facebook page, check the Patreon page if you haven't already. Uh, I did form a group for Patreon so that we can share um, pictures because it's so much easier. There's no way to share pictures on Patreon, but on our Facebook page, you can share pictures of your block of the month, which we just did the other night. I know you can't see it. It's, it's up there on my wall a little bit, but um, yeah, check that out. Before we move on, I just want to see interest <clears throat> in something a little bit different before we move on. <clears throat> and let me take a sip of water because, y'all, I go all day without saying two words. As soon as I start talking, like, I'll lose, lose my voice. Yes, the hummingbird. <clears throat> I think that's going to be a gorgeous quilt. So, you know, I'm all into art quilts and, and even some of my regular quilts I like to embellish, right? Well, we go to an antique shop uh, not too, too far away from our house that has these goodie bags. One time I went, oh, it was maybe a year or so ago, and I opened one of these goodie bags on my Facebook page during a live, right? Uh, but I bought another one. It was $38.50, <laughs> but this bag is like a, a stack of bricks. I didn't weigh it, but I bet you it weighs every bit of six or seven pounds. It is so heavy. Uh, you know I'm into making journals, junk journals, all kinds of journals, and I love these bags because not only do I find really cool stuff to embellish like pin cushions, art quilts, and things like that, uh, but I also find lots of really cool stuff that goes really awesome in my journals. I saw this bag the other day, and there's these blue, uh, these blue beads in there that caught my eye. So I got the bag. Who would be interested in watching me untangle and reveal what is in this bag? <laughs> there's all kinds of stuff in here, y'all. There's a, a there's a bracelet in here with the name Kevin engraved on it. Where's uh, Kevin's bracelet? If you know a Kevin, oh, there it is right there, Kevin. Poor Kevin, his bracelet ended up in this bag, but I'm really excited to see what all's in here. And uh, maybe if you wanna hang out during a live and watch me reveal what all is in here, I think that would be fun. It was like, Six pounds, my glory. <clears throat> okay, we're on to quilting. So let me catch you up to what I've done to this point, okay? Uh, last week we painted the inside, it dried, and I heat set the entire quilt, okay? So now the paint is really smooth and it's softened up. And uh, after I heat set it, I have glue basted my layers, right? I have a piece of thin, warm and natural batting, and I have a quilt backing, and I glue basted my three layers so that I did not have to put the pins through the painted surface and leave a permanent hole in my quilt that I didn't want once we're done. Ooh, Sheila offered to help untangle. That would be fun. That would be fun. So I'm all glue basted. And uh, I have done two passes of quilting on this quilt because I wanted to see if I could quilt it without a walking foot. And it is possible. I stitched from the top to the bottom without a walking foot. But I know that I want to do some straight line quilting and I thought the walking foot might help a little bit. And it did. I did one more straight line uh, with the walking foot and it did help a little bit. So, um, so I do have the walking foot on my machine and we're going to start out just by doing some straight lines uh, and the quilting in the black area. I think that's what we're going to do. We're going to see how time permits and uh, to be really honest with you, 
I don't know how I want to quilt this. I've been thinking and thinking and thinking on it. Uh, I know that I want to at least quilt in the black lines, and I don't know if I want to stop there or continue on. So we're just going to go with the flow. I do know that if I were to take my time, I don't know how many of the black lines I'd be able to quilt within the hour, so we might skip around a little bit. Ooh, y'all want to see me open the bag? Okay, maybe I'll save that and we'll do it live. Uh, it'll probably be a spur of the moment when I have a few minutes. <laughs> uh, so I don't know when the live will be, but if you're subscribed and you hit the bell notification, you'll get notified if I just out, out of nowhere go live. DV, yes, you can enlarge your patterns. Absolutely. If you want to make this quilt bigger, I think that would be awesome. You could certainly do that. All right, so let's switch over to the sewing machine. I have it all ready to go. Uh, so what I've done is selected a straight stitch and... Uh, I set my stitch length at a 3.0. That's going to make a little bit of a bigger stitch, but it's going to help feed these layers through evenly. And I think that's what I'm going to start off quilting with. And uh, when I'm over at the sewing machine, just know that I won't be able to see any comments. So if you have questions specific for me, you might want to hold on to them for a minute. Otherwise, uh, I know that lots of people here in the chat would love to help you with your questions too. All right, so we're going to switch over to the sewing machine. You're going to see this awkward side view of me up here in the corner. <laughs> and we're going to bring this right on over. All right, so from here in this site, you'll be able to see I've already stitched these two lines. And you might be able to see, uh, I used a black thread because when the hole goes into the painted surface, it's going to leave a little black hole there. And the black thread just kind of fills it up, right? So, uh, so I do know whatever quilting I'm going to do on this quilt, I'm going to use a black thread. So let's go ahead and start with the bottom of this circle. I, I tend to like to want to center and to secure the middle of my quilt first. So let's go ahead and stitch right in this thinner middle line right around. And I'm just going to lower my needle right in this previous stitch right there. And because we're sort of starting in the middle of the quilt, I will do a back stitch just to lock this in, especially since I'm using a little bit of a longer stitch. All right, now we're going to go for it. It's kind of nice because these lines, even though this is a thinner line of the quilt, it's still pretty, pretty broad and thick. So you have some wiggle room. I do think you could go right inside the scroll area just in the same manner. For me, it would be easier to put a free motion foot on and do that part. 
So uh, I'm going to stitch down to this previous stitch line and back stitch just to lock it in place and we'll skip to this next circle line. And I'm not going to cut the thread or anything. I'm just going to jump around. So I'm going to lift that needle up. And we're going to jump right down here into that previous quilt line. Lock that stitch. See, that's pretty simple quilting, right? We're going to stop right in in that previous line of quilting. And now I'm going to jump down to this bigger circle, the outer circle. And that's a little bit wide. So I think that I'm going to stitch a little bit closer to the circle instead of right in the middle. I think that's what I'm gonna do. What's really nice is that even though this is a nice size quilt, right, 20 by 20, it's still pretty maneuverable on your sewing machine. So we have the three inner circles quilted. Let's go ahead and start uh, sewing in between these pieces. And anytime I start, uh, I'm just going to start right in, in that previous quilting. Now, I'm stitching right off the quilt. I'm not even going to bother locking those stitches because we're going to square this quilt and trim off all the extra and put a binding on it. So those quilting stitches will be locked in. So I'm just going to jump right on over. You might have to fold your quilt up to fit it through there. That's okay. All right, so we got those lines done. Let's move over right here. I'm going to clip these little jump stitches right there just so I don't sew over them. 
This one, I'm going to quilt from this line. There we go. From this line all the way to the edge. I guess I should have done that on the previous one too. I didn't even notice that. <laughs> And get these bottom lines down here. And now we have these lines coming down. So I'm going to jump right here and stitch down. I'm going to have lots of little jump stitches to clip at some point. I'm just going to pull this thread. We're going to jump right back up to that middle circle and come down this middle line. jump back up one more time. I think there's gonna be lots of jumping around and moving from one place to another on this quilt. All right, let's cut these jump stitches so I don't Stitch over those and they're not in the way. I'm going to stitch this line here and then we're going to jump here and stitch down. I'm just going to travel right here along the edge and we're going to come back down the other way. <laughs> I'm just folding that quilt right up. Let's move over down to the bottom. We have some lines down here. I'm going to start right here. I feel like if you lift, like maybe you could see me up here in the corner, if you lift the quilt up a little bit and take some slack off of it. It helps to keep your lines nice and straight. All right, 
we're going to move right to this middle line. And then at this point, we just have a couple more lines to do. So let's move up to the top of our quilt. And I'm just gonna travel at the top and come right down the other side. And then I'm going to jump right over here. We have this yellow line right here, or the line between the yellow and the blue. And then let me clean off some of these jump stitches. Right when I started quilting over here, I skipped this one little section right there. I'm just going to stitch that so that every all of the black lines are stitched. Right into that line, it looks like it's one continuous line. <laughs> Okay, so that is all the black lines. Let's take a look over here and see if we want to do anything else, and I'll see what you think. <laughs> we have quite a few little jump stitches to clip. Are you using black thread on the top and the bobbin? Yes, Miss Louise, I am. Uh, that's my preference, just in case my tension's a little off. Uh, then you don't see any little like pops of thread, right? I used the same black thread in both the top and the bobbin. Ooh. Is that all the little jump? Nope, here's another one. Let's run my fingers over it and see if I can feel any. All right, so that's all the black lines quilted, and you could just stop right there, right? I don't know that you'd absolutely have to do any more quilting. Now, I know some of you do the whole quilt just to get to this part, right, to do the quilting. So you could keep going if you wanted. You could certainly keep going. If I've missed any questions, uh, now would be a good time to ask because I'm going to contemplate putting the free motion foot on. What do you think? I do think I would like to quilt at least, if I'm not doing anything else, quilt uh, the scroll and around the lamp. Really uh, adding some quilted texture to the center portion and really also securing that. That's a bigger space right there, right? Do I want to do any decorative stitches? While I have the walking foot on, should I do a decorative stitch maybe? If I do one decorative stitch, I'm going to have to do something in all of them. I already know that. <laughs> That's why I have a hard time committing to the quilting on this project. I kind of dislike it the way that it is. I think, ooh, okay, so Dari says, I would love to watch you free motion quilt the scroll and the lamps. 
So let's do that. Let's do that. We have quilted all the black lines. Let me put on this free motion foot. We will do that. I'll let you see that while I'm changing it out. We'll just take off this walking foot. We'll put on the free motion foot. Right now my tension is set right in the middle, right where it says auto. Sometimes with free motion, you have to adjust your tension a little bit differently than you would just using a straight stitch, right? We'll see if we have any thread breaks. I will lower my feed dogs and I'm on a straight stitch, but I'm just gonna lower the length down to a zero. So now we're set up for free motion work. <laughs> Ooh, Sally said I would do radiating lines from the light. Ooh, that would be gorgeous. I wanna thank y'all for moderating and keeping an eye on the chat. Especially when I'm over here at the sewing machine, I cannot see anything going on over on my phone. <laughs> All right, so no pressure. We're going to quilt the scrolly area. Right? That should be fun. So where do I want to start on this? Let's start right up here at this scroll. You'll see I put my glove on. That just helps me get a little bit of more traction, right? I'm gonna bring this bobbin thread up right in that quilting line that's already there. So there's my bobbin thread. I'm gonna hold on to both of them and just put that needle right down into that quilting line. And I'm gonna take a couple little tiny, tiny, tiny stitches just to lock this in place. Barely moved the quilt at all. And as soon as I start moving, I can trim away these little thread tails. You could bury them in your quilt if you wanted to. All right, let's travel down and get this little section and come back up. All right, and now we're going to start coming down. Uh, we'll get this little curvy loop-de-loop -loop thing here. And then I can go ahead and trim off. Where'd my little trimmers go? These thread tails. There we go. All right, so let's, uh, which way do we want to go? We're going to go up towards the top. There's so many different ways you could go. <laughs> I can already tell my tension's a little bit tight, so I am going to loosen that just a little bit. Let's see, while we're here, let's just go ahead and get this little loop-de-loop -loop here. We're going to go all the way to the end and then come back and catch this little scroll right there. All 
All right, the options we have. Let's uh, travel down towards the light. I'm just gonna fold this quilt up a little bit. You'll see I'm not going very fast at all. All right, with the light, I think I'm gonna stay close to the right side edge and we'll travel down. And when we come back up, I'll come up on the left side edge. Sorry, my finger was in the way. And I already know my machine. I'm doing a lot of turning of the quilt because when I'm doing free motion, my machine really likes to either go frontwards or backwards the best. Sometimes it'll break a thread if I'm traveling sideways. Uh, I do travel sideways, but I already know I'm risking <laughs> breaking that thread. And I think while I'm right there, uh, yeah, while I'm right there, I'm gonna go right up that middle. Let's do it. See, I'm gonna travel sideways, we'll hope but it doesn't break. All right, I'm gonna come back down and when I come back up this way, I'll catch the top of that side. We're going to travel over and catch the top of that. All right, my thread is behaving so nicely today. All right, so that is all the quilting I'm gonna do with the little light, the little lamp post right in the middle. And uh, we will travel back down and catch the rest of this scroll. It's kind of a wide area. I feel like you could probably quilt down both sides and that would look uh, that would look really nice. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll come back up on the left side of this bigger scrolled area.
right into that previous quilting, just blending that in a little bit. See both sides of that. And guess what? That's the lamp post and the scroll quilted. So, yeah, let's break thread and stop there for a minute. Kind of thinking just leaving the rest just the way it is. <laughs> There we go. In this view, it's really hard to even see. You don't even see the quilting lines on the screen, right? Uh, and it all just blends in. It kind of just keeps the focus on the design of the quilt, but adds a little bit of texture and really secures the layers of the quilt, right? So if I were to hang this, uh, the center area really wouldn't ever kind of droop. You know how it can look a little baggy or droopy? We just secured the center area. And uh, I really feel like we could be done. I really do. Everything in me is saying, Lisa, just leave it the way it is. So sometimes we have to listen to that. Sometimes we need to listen. I did quilt the rings. Yep, we started on this very middle one and then we did the inner and the outer ring. Uh, Cheryl said, the sewing foot, is that like a darning foot? Yeah, some machines call it a darning foot. Some machines call it a free motion foot. Uh, but yes, you could use your darning foot, absolutely. Oh. Harlan said he got me some Burger King. It's in the microwave. Thank you, honey. Hello, Miss Angel. Yeah, you know what? I think I'm done with this. I don't think I'm going to do any more quilting. I feel like something's telling me if you do anything more, you're going to regret it. And the thing about quilting through the painted surfaces, right, is that once you punch those holes, if you decide you don't like it, you could pick it out, but now you have holes that don't go away because the surface is painted, even with the fabric medium. So on this version, I'm going to call that done. Now, I do have a fabric version back there that I could quilt and quilt and quilt away, and if I didn't like it, I could unpick those stitches. <laughs> so yeah, I think, you know what, we're done with this. Yeah, I think we're done. Uh, so all that's really left now is uh, squaring this up, right? I'm going to square mine up to 20 by 20. It's going to be the same exact size as the last two art quilts that we did. And I'm going to put a black binding on mine. I've been putting black bindings on the other quilts so that when I put them side by side, it kind of forms this nice little black border in between separating the art quilts. And we're going to call this one done. Now, when I do put a binding on it, I'll post a finished picture on my Lisa Cape and Quilts Facebook page. So uh, if you're on Facebook and you're not following me there, uh, go check that out. And uh, you'll see an update on this when I get a binding on it. And when I finally quilt my fabric version, I will keep you updated there on that as well. Yeah, you want to see the back. Yes. Now the back still has all the jump stitches to trim. Uh, can you see that? With the light, the polka dots might want to make you a little dizzy. <laughs> I still have to clean up all the jump stitches on the back. But, uh, yeah, I kind of really just like the simplicity of it. You can just see it a little bit. The, wow, the polka dots are playing really crazy with my eyes on the screen. But that's the back. You can see all that scroll work, especially in person. Yes, Burger King. I hope it's a Whopper with cheese. <laughs> 
He knows I like the Whoppers with cheese. I'm pretty sure that's what it is. So, you know what? I have had a lot, a lot of fun with you and this quilt. Uh, I'm super excited to start the Hummingbird. I personally, okay, so if I were approaching the Hummingbird quilt that we're starting next week, I personally would do it with paint. But because I love you so much, I'm going to use fabric and it's going to be just as beautiful. Uh, I personally like painting on fabric. But I'm going to do my hummingbird in the fabric with you. And it's still going to be lots and lots and lots of fun. So uh, I know if you're like me, you have a hundred other projects going on. That's why we're going to break this up, right? We're going to do small little sections each week uh, to where it's not overwhelming, where it's like, wow, I have all this stuff to keep up with. No, we're breaking this quilt down to smaller sections. And uh, you'll see here in red, this is the first section we're doing. It'll be, let's see, let's count the pieces. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 whole pieces. The pieces that fall along the edges, I'm waiting until uh, we have the pieces that are joined to it, right? What did I say? 11 pieces? 18 pieces? I forget now. That's not a lot. And so I, I really feel like we can get this done uh, within the time that we spend together each week. And uh, it shouldn't be one more thing on top of all the other things uh, that add to like our workload. Should be a lot of fun. Are you putting a first part uh, of the hummingbird up on Thursday? Yes, ma'am, Miss Sylvia. Yes, ma'am. Let me show you what that looks like. You will get uh, both pages. It's a two-page PDF. You get the right side and the mirror image, right? Tons of, tons of millions of different ways you can approach this quilt. I personally... We'll be using the right side up underneath my black fabric as a guide to where to put my pieces down. And I'm going to use heat and bond light, so I'll be tracing my pieces from the mirror image side. So that's how I'm going to use my two sheets. Miss Cheryl, you could do the pink colors. I did not assign colors with this quilt. And to be really honest, even though I assigned colors to the previous quilts we've done, uh, I hope that you feel like you have the freedom to pick and choose whatever colors you want to use, right? I did not color this one in because uh, I really feel like part of the learning process is you learning uh, how to put colors together how to uh, use contrast and brightness. Uh, so I want you to, to start with a blank palette. I'm going to be pulling my from my stash, but not my stash stash. At the bottom, I have baskets of little pieces of fabric, and that's going to be perfect for these pieces. Uh, I don't think... I'll be using lots of repeated pieces. It's going to be scrappy, uh, and it's going to be from scraps. That's my plan. I'm not buying any fabric for the applique portion. I will be going and getting some black fabric for the base. So instead of using a white fabric for the base and painting, I'm going to use a black fabric. And uh, so all these little lines are going to show up automatically. <laughs> Corrine, I have not posted this particular project yet. What I have posted, though, if you want to start getting your stuff together for it, is this very first page. Uh, the link to the PDF is down in the description box. It'll tell you uh, your top fabric. I'm using black on mine. Your batting and your backing fabric requirements. And then a couple of supplies 
depending on which version you want to do, right? This is already uploaded. Oh, y'all are so welcome. You're so welcome. You're very welcome. Uh, if you're free next week in the evening, don't forget about our live, doing the lots of hexes. We're doing applique a little bit of a different way. It's certainly not a new way. People have been doing this for years and years and years. But uh, it's a little bit different than raw edge applique. These are all turned. And uh, I'm excited to show you that. This pattern is also already down in the description box. And I'll be putting a thumbnail up in a couple of days. Yes, I'm really glad to have this quilt done. Uh, my vision for this quilt is, uh, it was inspired by a couple paintings I did a few years ago. And I was always sorry that I didn't make myself one, so now I have one. Yay. <laughs> Thank y'all so much for hanging out with me. Thank you to all my moderators today. And uh, yes, I look forward to seeing quite a bit of you next week, at least twice that I know of here on YouTube. So until then, stay safe, have lots of fun, and share your lamp post quilt over on the creative crew. We would love to see it. How is your cathedral window coming? It has taken a back seat, Angel. <laughs> it's taken a back seat. It is not forgotten, though. Uh, I have a board of... Uh, don't forget me projects, right? And the pattern and my pieces are clipped to the board. So I see it like every day when I walk by the board. But it's just taking a little rest right there. Not forgotten. Just taking a rest. <laughs> All right. And uh, yeah, keep an eye out for me to pop up live. I don't know when it will be. It might uh, be today, it might be tomorrow, it might be Sunday. Coming up soon, though, because uh, I've had this bag since last weekend, and I'm patiently uh, waiting to open it, but I'm really, like, really wondering what's in the middle of this. I know it's a big, tangled, tangled mess, uh, but who else likes to uh, embellish quilts? And small projects like pin cushions and stuff like that. I see some pieces just from what I can see that would look pretty amazing on a pin cushion. Oh, and I know Kevin's bracelet is in here. We're going to rescue that. And there's also another monogrammed piece right here. Hmm. Yes. Okay, so... Not only the blue beads caught my eye, but there's a little pink square right there. Can you see that? I don't know exactly what that is, but it's gorgeous. I can't wait to open it up and see what that is. So, yeah, keep your eyes out for me to pop up live to open that up. I know, I might have all kinds of treasures in this bag. I guess we'll see. Who knows? I do know it's heavy as mess. All right. Have a fantastic weekend. Hold on before we go. Yeah, I can't spoil it now. I don't know. I'm not going to talk about what all else I see in there. Uh, do you print out all the pieces together? Miss Corrine, before we go, are you talking about the lamppost quilt or the hummingbird quilt? Because we were just talking about the hummingbird quilt. The hummingbird quilt. I'll go ahead and just start answering both. The lamp post. Uh, yeah, you print out all the pieces at one time with, with the lamp post. Um, the hummingbird quilt, we're breaking up into nine weeks. <laughs> Which is going to seem like forever, but if you're like me and you have other stuff going on, it kind of really makes it less overwhelming to do a lot at one time. The hummingbird, we're going to break it up. So 
you'll get a section each week, right? So if you want to do the quilt and you can't catch the lives, just come to that week's live to get your new pieces, right? So week one, we're working right up in this top corner. And you'll see the red boxes, that breaks up the pieces that you're getting. Each week, you're getting one piece, but I've mirror imaged it. So it looks like you're getting two pieces, but it's really the same piece. One's right side up and one is mirror imaged. And that's all we have to do in the first week, right? And so that's how we're doing it. Uh, so the pieces of this quilt are broken up. All right, everybody, I am off to eat, hopefully a Whopper with cheese. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I hope you have a fantastic weekend. I'll see y'all soon for some jewelry untangling. And I'll see you. Uh, here's the date and the time. Don't forget. Keep an eye out for the thumbnail. You can set a reminder. And until then, be safe, everybody. Have fun creating stuff. Share pictures on the creative crew. We want to see it. Bye, everybody. <laughs>